Shared history defines a culture. If we get the history wrong, we misunderstand ourselves. Pulitzer Prize winner Tony Horwitz explores the century-long blank spot in American history between Columbus and Jamestown in a voyage long and strange. History as we think of it as it's written today is a really quite a, a recent invention, basically late 18th century. Uh, and that before that, history was a very different thing. Yeah, it was saga, it was myth, etc. It wasn't, there wasn't this notion of trying to uh, put together history the way we do now. Um, as, so, as if you could, as if you could do that. Right, exactly. It's a, it's a sort of enlightenment idea. Um, and I think it's relevant to, to this story because one of the reasons the pilgrims have been sort of enshrined as our, um, uh, our founders uh, is that that happened really in the early 19th century, in the early years of this new science of history, uh, was really when they began writing America's history. And it was mostly Protestant New Englanders. And the writers. The, the writers. And as they looked back to the country's origins, perhaps not surprisingly, they elevated their own forebearers who had landed at Plymouth. Surprise! And diminished the role of the non-English, of Catholics, of Spanish, French, and even of Southerners, um, hence Jamestown, even though it precedes uh, Plymouth, to this day still plays second fiddle somehow. So uh, I think it, it, it kind of fits a little bit her paradigm also of just how she was describing the history of history itself. There are people in academic uh, situations, universities and colleges, that talk of history as a science now, mm -hmm. as if there is a science of history which particularly given the kinds of things we're talking about, um, seems to me to be a um, really a misguided idea that uh, either it misapprehends what science is, and science, that's still up right. for grabs, uh, or more, more perhaps dangerously misapprehends the human experience and our relationship yeah. to ourselves, our communities, and our pasts. Right, and how subjective it exactly. inevitably is. On the other hand, I think you can go too far the other way into whatever you want to call it, postmodern view that there is no, no truth, there are no facts. And I run into it a lot with this subject again, where people want to believe things, uh, and not necessarily the old myths, there are all kinds of new myths. Uh, Columbus was Jewish, um, the Chinese discovered America, et cetera, et cetera. People who want to uh, latch on to what in my view are, are myths uh, based on, on very slim or non-existent evidence, um, partly arguing that, well, your facts are are not facts. There are no facts. Um, we can believe anything. It's all point of view, uh, and I I'm not particularly comfortable with that. Well, you are uh, a reporter after either. all. Yeah, I mean I do. And we'd like to think that matters. I don't. Uh, you know, I'm I'm quite conservative on this. I think there really should be a firewall between fiction and nonfiction, and uh, I think we've been on a slippery slope there for a long time. And partly what we were talking about before, a feeling that. Well, there is no truth, and the fiction can be as true as nonfiction, and of course it can. You can get at emotions and, and things you can't get through in nonfiction. So as long as it's presented as fiction, that's great. I think if you present something as nonfiction, it, it absolutely has to be that.